Let's talk about suffering at the end of life. It may be uncomfortable to think about, but it's important that we do because it involves some of the most challenging ethical issues that we face. Strides in technology and improvements to the quality of our healthcare have gone far to reduce suffering, but cannot always provide a good death. Progress was made in 2016 when the right to die via medical assistance in dying, or MAID, was legalized in Canada. Currently, this right only extends to adults. But given that young people can also suffer at the end of life, shouldn't they also receive the right to die? My research focuses on this question, examining the morality of extending the right to die to this vulnerable group. Through analyzing the evidence in law, medicine, and philosophy, I've developed a case that young people's right to die should be recognized via MAID, just like adults. And this case features two key arguments. The first argument is about equality and fairness. My reaction to our laws governing the right to die is, is this an act of age discrimination? Given that young people can suffer just as much as any adult, I think it is. As it stands, the law disadvantages youth because adults can now end their suffering on their own terms, whereas young people cannot. The second argument is about consistency. I compare MAID to another end-of-life decision, the choice to refuse a life-saving treatment. And based on this comparison, I make the argument that when it comes to MAID, we deviate from the way that young people's medical decisions are usually handled. For instance, if they're capable, a young person can refuse a blood transfusion on religious grounds, choosing to die when they can otherwise live. We rightfully give this choice to young people as a matter of their personal values. But for those who are already dying and who are experiencing suffering that cannot be alleviated, we deny them control over how they die. Now, when it comes to the right to die for youth, it is a complex and challenging issue, and it challenges our deeply held values about autonomy and our, the way that we handle protecting the vulnerable. My research addresses these complicated matters so that when this issue is raised in our courts or in our House of Commons, we prioritize legislation that treats our youth fairly and consistently. Thank you.